Hello and welcome to the inaugural video of rolang to go a video series about the very new, very powerful and also very, very weird programming language called Rolang. My name is David of Inblock.io Labs and I will tell you all the other boring stuff at the end of the video. For now, let's just jump right into the technology. Let's begin with the Rolang primer. What is Rolang? Rolang is a new language for writing smart contracts on the Archain platform. For those who don't know yet, Archain is a blockchain-ish distributed computing network, quite like Ethereum, with the added benefit of being secure, scalable, and sustainable by construction, which if you dive deeper into the resources provided below, you'll, under, you'll come to understand that essentially Archain is kind of consequence of the calculus that Rolang is based upon. Um, what is actually this calculus that I, I just talked about? So the language is based on a reflective higher order process calculus, which in turn is based on Robin Milner's uh, polyadic pi calculus, which was discovered in the early 90s. As such, it is uh, inherently concurrent, which makes it much better suited for distributed programming than languages based on Turing machines or, or Church's Lambda calculus, because both of those are inherently sequential. Uh, as I said before, for the integrity details, check out the links in the description. Onward to our example. So what we see here in the, uh, on the screen is an animation that is actually not rolling, but I've borrowed it from Devan, uh, who made this for Go. And here I want to explain the quintessential properties of concurrent programs. So what are we looking at here? This animation shows the execution trace of a Go program. The narrow blue lines on the perimeter are so-called Go routines, which have qualities that are very similar to processes in Rolang. The red lines are channels, and the numbers you see along these channels are the messages that have been passed from one process to another. The program behind this animation is quite simple. The main thread spawns three Go routines, which are called players. And all that these players do is they receive a ball from another player and then pass it on to the next player. And on and on this goes until a critical count is reached and the ball is passed back to the main thread. That might actually be a great example to implement for one of the future videos. So I'll keep that in mind. Alas, let's go on to the next slide. Why do we even want to do concurrent programming? So, in order to understand that, we should draw a line between concurrent and parallel programming, which, depending on what source you look at, may seem very similar, but it's actually quite different. Concurrent programming and its abstractions focus on the correctness of a computation, the consistency of the state in the context of interleaved or concurrent execution. Parallel programming, on the other hand, focuses on structuring an algorithm or a computation in such a way that all the available parallel resources are used efficiently. So in typical actual engineering tasks, you would have both approaches present and they would be related and even used in combination. But goals and abstractions are actually quite different. In real life systems, a lot of things happen concurrently and anything that wants to react in near real time needs to ensure that it doesn't end up in blocking situations or that these are at least controlled for. So this is actually what is meant by the focus on the consistency and correctness of a computation in this definition. here. This visualization shows the power of concurrency. There are two message producers that send their data to wherever they have been called from, in this case, the main thread. And then inside the main routine or function or method, anything that is received on the so-called return channels from these producers is sent directly onto the out channel onwards to the reader. Why is this awesome? Uh, information is passed to the reader process at the moment it becomes available without any overhead in managing that communication by the main routine. If you look closely, you can actually see that whenever one or two or three or four is sent by a producer two, it is directly handed over to reader 21. Rolang actually takes this concept to the extreme and is entirely based around the primitives of processes, names, and channels. What do we need to do to run Rolang? 
you have two options, obviously. You can run it locally or you can run it in the browser. Personally, I would recommend running it in the browser, going to the domain Arch.cloud, because it's entirely hassle-free and you don't have to put up with any configuration whatsoever. And that's what we're going to do. Let's take a look at the Hello World example in old syntax first. What do we have here on the left side? In the first line, we have Hello World and the new in construction. The new in construction creates a new private channel, which means that no other process can send or receive messages on this channel unless we actually send this channel to that other process. Now we can start shaping our Hello World program. In line number two, we create a name Hello World, use the contract keyword to create a process that spawns a copy of itself whenever it receives a message instead of just terminating after the first execution. Here we have the channel we want to send on, the sending operator, and the message. Now it's important to remember that in Rolang, we can only send processes and receive names. So since message is a name, we need to unquote it first to turn it into a process to make it possible to be sent. Now we have a curly bracket here, which essentially closes the contract. And then we have a bar. The bar means whatever happens before the bar and after the bar is executed concurrently. So we have no actual control in which order it is going to be executed. Now, we can, we can use this mnemonic of something happening at the same time. So while we have a contract that is active in the tuple space, somewhere called hello world which is waiting for a message and then once it receives a message sending out this message in the form of a process to the standard output in parallel to that we send on the just created channel hello world the message hello world what what, what do we see here so we see here and essentially the inversion of sending and receiving. It's absolutely okay to receive before you send and send before there's a way to receive. What matters is that during the execution of Rolang, in the, in the lifetime of these two processes, the send and receive meet. And when the send and receive meet, we have a so-called COM or communication event. And this is when actually the processes have talked to one another. All right then, let's see it come to life. Excellent. Here you can see what has been evaluated in the tuple space and here you see the standard output and as expected it is hello world. As I promised at the beginning of the video I will show you another implementation of hello world with current syntax which is much much simpler. Let's take a look at the Cryptofax IDE while we're at it. This is the Cryptofax IDE and as you can see there's much more comment than there is code. But let's go through these two lines uh, for a second here. Again, we have the new in construction, which means we create an unforgeable name or a private channel. And we have the simple sending command. We send to the standard out the message, hello world. What does this actually do here? So here we actually reserve or request a part of the global standard out re resource for ourselves. And we actually use the name standard out. We could use any other name as well. And I will demonstrate this. So any other name. And of course, since we're sending to this very channel, we also need to use the same name. Any other name. And this should run without a problem. Taking a long time. Oh, here we are. Here we are. This is the expression that's being evaluated. This is the output we got. And this is the estimated deploy cost. And this wraps up the first Rolling to Go video. There's a lot more where that came from. We will be exploring much more complex contracts in the future, which will be way too big for even a single session. So we'll be splitting those into five or six different videos which means you'll have ample time to understand the nitty-gritty details of Rolang. 
Um, another public service reminder, we have a weekly Roland community call, which happens Thursdays. Uh, you'll find the details in the description. And I also invite you to join the ArtChain CoLab, the collaboration laboratory, where all of us meet to discuss all things Roland in Discord and in the forum. I hope you learned something and until the next video.